The last thing I'd like to do to our layout is take a look at one thing that we can do to change the way we draw some vector shapes. Now, what I wanted to do is put a little bit more interesting background behind all of these other elements. We can add a layer to the back by simply clicking on the lowest layer and, of course, adding a new layer. I'll rename this layer background, so I'll just double click on it and type background. And you can see that that layer got put above the lowest layer. We can put it to the back just by dragging it down one. And in this layer, I'd like to add a background that covers the entire stage. I'm just going to go for my normal rectangle tool again. We'll adjust the settings a little bit. Now, for starters, I don't really want a stroke on this. I just want a fill. So I'm going to use that red slash there at the top. And for a fill, I'm not going to worry about the color. So I'm just going to pick a green that we can easily see. And I want square corners on this, so I'm going to get rid of the rounding we have by typing in 0 for my corner radius. Next, I'll just draw a rectangle, and I want it somewhere close to the size of the stage. Now, you'll notice since we put it in that background layer, it's going to be behind all the other objects. And to get it the same size as the stage, I'm just going to click on it. And don't forget that we can just change the width and height and location properties right here in the position and size panel. I'll set X to 0. We're just clicking and typing in these fields. Y should also be 0. And that will line our corner up to the top corner of the stage. And then I'll just set the stage width to 850 to match. And the height to 450. Now, green doesn't look too good here. But what I wanted to try out was another option in our color panel over here on the side. The first thing the color panel gives us is access to the rest of the colors, so to speak. We're not limited to just the ones that you get in the pull-down menu. We can actually use any color of the rainbow by just dragging this selector around, maybe adjusting lightness and darkness values, and even mixing them directly by using the RGB values. But that's not all. We've been using solid colors up to this point, but we also have an option of linear and radial gradients and bitmap fills. Now, just so we can see what the bitmap fill looks like, let's select it first. This selection gives me a choice of any bitmap graphic that's in my library. They'll appear down here as thumbnails, and if you have multiple bitmaps, you can choose any one of them. You can see that this bitmap fills up my rectangle, and if the bitmap's too small, it just tiles so that it fills in that area completely. Now, you can see that's pretty jumbled, so we're not going to be using a bitmap graphic for our project. But let's go up and try a gradient. A linear gradient is just a ramp of color. And basically down in the selection window, we can see that we're starting with black on one end and white on the other side. And our gradient fills in that space in between blending the two colors together. You can see that represented in the fill of our actual rectangle in the background here as well. Now we can change the gradient by changing the color chips that make the gradient ramp up. You can see that a chip is selected when the black triangle is filled at the top. I'll just click on the white one over here to show that. And any changes I make to the color are going to be reflected in that chip. So I could go, for instance, for a green to black gradient. And there you can see that my ramp adjusts accordingly. If you want more colors in your gradient, you can just click on the bar anywhere you like, and it'll make you another color chip. Let me change this one to, let's say, a little yellow in there. And you can see that I'm getting black to yellow to green now. Now when you set a gradient up, you can change the direction of the gradient with another tool. So let me click away from the color panel for a moment. And I'm going to go back up to my tool palette. If I click and hold on the free transform tool, you'll see that there's two tools stacked there. And the second one is a gradient transform tool. Let me select that. I'll go use that tool to click on my gradient. And you'll see what I get are a set of handles that are specifically designed to manipulate the gradient, not the shape. I've got a rotation tool up here in the corner. And there you see I'm rotating that gradient, so now it's going in an angular direction. I can also scale the gradient. And I've got a center point to move that gradient center around. So we've got a lot of control of these gradients. In addition to those controls, back in the color palette, we also have an overflow control that lets me control what happens on the outside of the gradient area. Normally, it's just going to end, 
but I can use this control to mirror or repeat a gradient. I'll just select the repeat setting, and there you can see my gradient just repeats over and over again. Now, what I really wanted to use for our gradient is not a linear gradient, but a radial gradient. So let's change that selection. The radial gradient is going to give you a similar ramp, but it's going to go from the center out instead of in a side-by-side -side fashion. I don't need the overflow setting to repeat, so I'm going to set that back to its normal extend setting. And what I'd like to do is set this gradient up so it's going from green to black on the outside. I don't need the middle color, and I can get rid of that by simply clicking on it and pulling down. Then I'm going to go to the black color chip, and I'm going to set it to a nice olive green. I'll pick out a green point in the setting, change my lightness and darkness values, and that's looking fairly good. Let me change this one to black. We'll pull that all the way down in the darkness settings. And that's sort of what I wanted for a color background. I still have my gradient transform tool selected, so let's go out here and select that gradient with it, and you'll see that for a radial gradient, we get similar controls, but they're a little bit different since we've got a different type of gradient we're working with. I've got a scale control over here on the side that lets me squish that gradient down and make it non-circular. I've got a scaling tool that lets me take the whole thing and scale it up and down. And I've got a rotation tool and a center tool. So let me rotate this to a little bit tilted, but not quite horizontal. And there we're getting a nice, interesting glow in the back of our website. Now let me just go back to my normal selection tool, and we'll click away from everything. And we can get a pretty good look at our website layout. We've seen how to add text and bitmaps to our repertoire of tools that we can work with. We've also added to what we know about our vector shapes with the gradients and the other types of fills. And very importantly, we figured out how to work with a symbol. And we're going to be working with those a lot more in the chapters to come. If you're going to be working along with me in the next chapter, make sure you save your files and we're ready to go.